Hi friends and my dear students. Today in physics second volume, seven point three four, seven point three four, division German experiment, division and German experiment. Actually, what is the aim of this experiment? This experiment was conducted in. 1927 1927 before that a famous scientist louis de broglie who invented the <coughs> matter waves the matter waves was suggested by the louis de broglie experimentally davison and germer was proved proved what actually the construction and the working principles of the this experiment that we are going to see today very important question and very easy question now let us think about the electron beams are when we consider any crystal suppose the matter of waves are electron rays as per louis de broglie matter waves are electron waves electron waves hitting on the crystal hitting on the crystal surface then the reflected rays reflected rays are diffracted reflected rays are diffracted or scattered ray are diffracted diffracted so what why it was happen what is meant by diffraction suppose let us assume this is a, an object when you are allowing any ray hitting on the surface then it may be bend bend and move towards to the next side that is called diffraction that is called diffraction and the diffraction which will depend on the instant wavelength the diffraction which will depends on the instant wavelength That is the basic principle, right? Now, how it was act as a three-dimensional diffracting grating, diffracted grating. Here, if you consider nickel crystal or any other crystal, there may be a layer by layer, very thin layer. You have to consider this is a crystal. There may be a Ten or hundred layers within this smallest region. That's why if you are then consider mica sheet, you have to take a needle and just you have to layer by layer you have to add it. Likewise, that's why here the distance of in between the layer is very 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 small. the distance of the layer one layer to the another layer the distance is very 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 small very very small like the wavelength of the instant ray of electron wave also very 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 small that's why that is the major reason both are equal and equally small that's why when the electron waves or matter waves hitting the surface of the crystal then the scattered ray are diffracted the scattered ray are diffracted not only in particular direction but in all direction like this or like this or like this anyway anywhere else anywhere else that is the principle that we are going to adopt it here now 
for ordinary light waves if you are utilizing instead of electron beam the wavelength is far far higher then when you allow to hit the surface of the nickel the reflected ray is ordinary ray not a diffracted ray not a diffracted ray only because this wavelength is far 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 higher than the wavelength of electron rays that's why it may be useful for ordinary or ordinary ray not a diffracted ray that's why and because of that reason this crystal act as a diffractic diffracted diffracted grating 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 which was act is a kind of a ray which will hit the surface of the crystal then the reflected may be diffracted that's the principle which are using here now you are going to see the construction of the the structure of the experiment here <clears throat> low tension battery uh, was connected with the filament any filament any filament then there may be ejection of electron because of the heat energy when you allow the voltage to the filament then the heat energy which will be evacuated through this filament then there may be ejection of electrons there may be ejection of electrons these electrons are not able to cross the disc aluminum diaphragms 1 and 2 in case any leakages which will happen in the diaphragm 1 then it will be stopped by 2 and it may be converted to be as a ray electron ray that's why we are utilizing to diaphragm aluminum diaphragm diaphragm to converge this uh, scattered electron into a pencil like beam pencil like beam means a ray scattered or converted into a pencil like a beam this is a fundamental usage of this aluminum diaphragm diaphragms that we are used in here then there may be a major and a important role of aluminum cylinder which was connected to the positive so it may act as anode that is positively charged so we are applying the higher positive voltage to this aluminum cylinder or accelerated this electron accelerated this electron ray so that it may be traveled fastly and hit the surface of the nickel crystals that's why it is called instant beam instant beam which are more accelerated because of the attractive pull by the aluminum cylinder attractive pull by the aluminum cylinder that's why whenever these electron rays are matter of waves hit the surface of the crystal then there may be a ray which will be scattered and the scattered ray must be must be a diffracted wave diffracted wave diffraction may take place diffraction may take place not only in particular direction is scattered in all direction we have to move and another instrument apparatus we are placing here this is called electron detector this is called electron detector at particular angle of theta if you are moving to the here and there whatever you may be like in the axis itself that's why if you want to suppose if theta is 30 degree if you want to move the electron detector to the 10 degree this is it possible quite possible you can move towards anti clockwise then you can reduce the theta 
So the theta is the angle in between the incident beam and the scattered refracted beam. That is called the theta. That is called theta. Now what we are going to identify from this experiment? What we are going to identify from this experiment is a very important. The intensity, intensity of diffracted, diffracted waves are scattered waves, scattered rays, scattered rays was detected by the detector. Intensity, the intensity with respect to theta. If we are changing the theta, if suppose we are considering x axis as theta and y axis as like in diffracted wave, diffracted ray or wave, ray or wave. This is called intensity of intensity, intensity of diffracted wave or ray. Then we can try a, this is called 0 degree, theta degree, 10, 30, 10 degree, 30 degree, 50 degree, 70 degree, and then 90 degree likewise. When you are increasing the detector by means of uh, moving here and there with the angle between the incident ray and the scattered ray, if the theta is increased, initially, initially when the theta is lesser than 30, the intensity is higher. When the theta is very near to the 30, it reduces and again, if you are increasing the angle, then it may be raised. Again, it may be raised and get maximum value at, at theta equal to 50 degree. Theta equal to 50 degree. Again, it may be reduced and so on, like that. From this figure, we conclude that there is no constant scattered rows are available by the diffractional grating of crystal. It may be varies depends upon the scattered angle between the incident and scattered angle. So, if you are keeping this voltage is 54 volt and that means you are accelerating this electron ray by applying the passive voltage to the aluminum cylinder at the voltage of 54. That's the graph that you are drawn here. But in last chapter, Louis de Broglie, who already suggested, who already invented, what is the wavelength of electron? Wavelength of electron, it is nothing but 12.27 Armstrong divided by root of V. Root of V. And if suppose, in last class, we already see, if suppose, if V is 100 volt, 100 volt, then it may be equal to 1.227 Armstrong. Now instead of 100, we are applying positive voltage to this aluminum cylinder is called 54 voltage. So that instead of 100, we have to put 54. We have to put 54. And so that it may be equal to 1.67 Armstrong. 1.67 Armstrong. But theoretically, theoretically, the scientists 
calculated the distance between the lattice of the crystal that is one lakh to the another lakh distance this is called d there may be so many lattices are available or layers are available the distance between one successive layer is called d by calculating d theoretically they may conclude the wavelength of nickel crystal 1.65 armstrong 1.65 armstrong as per this experimental conclusion as per this experimental conclusion from this graph the intensity of diffracted rays and theta in between the incident and the scattered wave or ray we draw a graph from this it may vary so that the wavelength of this electron ray are consumed according to this experiment is called 1.67 but actually they detected already before this experiment was conducted they know the value of lambda already value of the lambda that is equal to 1.65 armstrong both are equal both are electrons wavelength electrons wavelength here wavelength of nickel crystal both are almost equal because 0.02 this is a variation it is nothing but equal to zero both are same identical both are same so that davison germer experiment prove that louis de bras de bray theory of electrons wavelength is equal to 1.67 armstrong 1.67 armstrong when it was accelerated by 54 voltage 54 voltage that are applied to the aluminum cylinder or anode that's a very good result that was obtained by the davison and germer experiment this is the proof of this is a proof given by the davison and germer for bray louis de bray theory of uh, explanation of uh, electron wavelength that's a very good experiment prove proved experimentally so we conclude that electron ray it is nothing but electron ray or matter waves it is also possess dual property that is electron waves not ray it is waves and wavelength of the electron already given by the de bray is successfully proved by the this experiment so that we are happy to read about this experiment i hope you understand clearly if you are happy then recommend to your friends about this video and uh, click the bell all bells thank you my friends